Now we turn to the countries where there appear to be insufficient rights to authorize the reproductions needed to create a text and data mining database at all. So in the yellow countries in this map, private copyrights exist and they do extend to the full use of articles such as journal articles, but the rights explicitly ban copies of full books. A representative law in this regard would be the Copyright Act in Russia. There's a fairly broad personal copyright provided in the first paragraph, but the right contains exceptions. Like some we covered already, it prohibits even a private copy of a database, so that may block the sharing of works or the database with other researchers in ways that require reproduction. It also prohibits the copy of full books. So here, you might be able to create a data mining corpus of journal articles for a project, but you can't create a corpus that includes full books in that data mining project. So these countries have been labeled in yellow because you can do some data mining projects in those countries, but you can't do the full scope of them. And in none of these countries are there clear rights to share copies between researchers. And finally, some private use rights may not be useful for TDM projects at all because they are limited to the use only of excerpts and therefore function in reality as quotation rights. So Argentina is a case in point here. This is probably the most restrictive copyright law in the world. It contains one exception, and this is it. The exception is only for quotation and the right quantitatively limits the amount of text that can be used even in a quotation. And so we end here where we began. The Berne Convention requires countries to have only one exception to copyright, an exception for quotation. There's also an exclusion of pure facts, and that would operate in Argentina as well. But a country can choose only to have that exception under the Berne Convention. And so here you have the world again. The red countries have only the minimum exceptions required by the Berne, the Berne Convention. They only allow the use of excerpts, even if the use is for private use and even if the use is for research. Now there are a number of countries we haven't found or couldn't translate the law, and we've left those in gray. We don't actually know what the laws are in those areas. Now note that the number of countries where you cannot make a TDM database at all, at least if you're using full works, is relatively small, but it's clustered in some huge and important countries to our south. Now note I started out by saying that we were only measuring the law in the books, and by which we mean the law and statutes, and we haven't looked particularly at cases interpreting those laws. I happen to know, for example, that Brazil's Supreme Court has held that you can use human rights values and free expression principles to broaden its incredibly restrictive copyright law. So it may be in practice that if a case was litigated in Brazil, or that if you got legal advice from a properly trained lawyer there, you may receive the advice that in fact there may be more that you could do in that country than the law provides. But the statute itself is incredibly limited. On the other hand, the number of countries where you can both make and share TDM databases with other researchers is also relatively small, but it includes some very large and important places. Canada and the United States, China and India, Israel and much of Southern Africa, for instance. Most of the, most of the countries in the world that speak English as a primary language are actually in the green. They have some kind of open research exception or fair dealing exception. So this might actually be a very useful group of countries for projects for an American researcher. In the next section, we will be analyzing how you approach the matter when you're in a green country like the United States, but want to do a project with a colleague in a blue, yellow, or red one. Whose law restrains you here? But before turning to that, I want to give you maybe a little bit of hope and a challenge to get engaged in something that might actually help. Now, before moving on to the choice of law, I want to leave you with a little hope. 
The last major copyright treaty to emerge from the World Intellectual Property Organization was the Marrakesh Treaty for the Blind. I mentioned in my introduction to myself that I'm continuing to work in the World Intellectual Property Organization Standing Committee for Copyright and Related Rights, which is considering whether there should be additional treaties or other international agreements that follow and extend the Marrakesh principles to other areas, like libraries, archives, museums, education, and research. The essence of the Marrakesh Treaty is three main clauses that are meant to promote the creation and sharing of accessible format materials for the blind and visually impaired. Now, creating such materials requires the implication of exclusive rights. It requires the reproduction, and it can also require the adaptation, the translation, the making available, distribution, communication of works, even if limited to small groups of people like people with disabilities and for an incredibly important social purpose. So the treaty has three main clauses. The first, in Article 4, every country has to have a minimum exception for creating accessible format works for people with disabilities. And it has to be open to all rights, including both reproduction rights, adaptation rights, and sharing rights. Now, I've been saying that the only required exception under the Berne Convention is for a quotation, and that is true. The Marrakesh Treaty is not part of the Berne Convention. But in actuality, international copyright law has at least two minimum exceptions, the Berne Convention mandatory right for copyright and the Marrakesh Treaty exception for creating and sharing accessible format works for people with visual impairments. Now, the second major provision here, and this was the first time in any international treaty, any international copyright treaty that such a provision was included, is Article 5, specifically on the cross-border sharing of lawfully made works under the exception. So if a work is lawfully made in one country, it, other countries have to, have to permit the importation of that item into its country. And the third important criterion, and number 10, is that every country may, and it's not required, but may implement the treaty with general exceptions, such as fair use or fair dealing of the kind that we've labeled green, go for TDM research activities under our law. So I end you with this question that I invite you to comment on in the TDM worksheet I started you out with. Would a similar set of rights for non-expressive uses of research materials for text and data mining activities be useful in your work? And if so, how? I would love to collect some anecdotes on whether this kind of action in your area would be particularly helpful, and if so, how? And so I'll leave you to do the rest of that homework before I see you soon in our live discussion. Thanks.